non-existent goods not covered by marine cargo insurance. In brief, Angel Heart shows that to cover financial losses that do not result from physical loss or damage, the open cover cargo policy must contain clear words to that effect. The fact in the English High Court decision in Angel Heart v. Lloyd Syndicate 1221-2018 should cause concern to anyone involved in the international carriage of good by sea whether as traders or insurers. In this case, the cargo claimant was unsuccessful in its claim against its insurers under its open cover cargo policy. A physical loss claim do not include circumstances where insured is defrauded into taking out document of title for non-existent good court find the claimant had purchased copper in gut from a supplier which it had then on sold to a consignee in China. There were two shipments involved. The first arrived at the ultimate destination, but the second had never been shipped, and there was no cargo to be physically lost or damaged. The losses were therefore treated as economic losses due to the cargo owner's acceptance of fraudulent document in the expectation that they covered physical goods. Unfortunately, there is no explanation in the judgment as to how the fraud was perpetrated and how the documentation was produced and payment made for the good without the involvement of the original supplier. It was suggested that broader work would be required if the policy was to cover more than losses flowing from physical loss or damage to goods. The cargo owner was therefore unsuccessful even though its cargo cover was subject to the Institute Cargo Clauses A and contained the following two provisions. Container Clause Notwithstanding anything contained herein to the contrary, where cargo, insured hereunder, is carried in containers, it is agreed as between the assured and insurers that the seaworthiness and or cargo worthiness of the container is hereby admitted. It is agreed that this insurance contract has also to pay for shortage of content, meaning thereby the difference between the number of package as per shipper and or supplier's invoice and or packing list loaded or alleged to have been laden in the container and or trailer and or vehicle load and the cone of package removed therefrom by the assured and or their agent at time of container emptying, notwithstanding that seals may appear intact and or any other loss and or damage including but not limited to cargo and or container sweat houseover arising. Fraudulent Document Clause This insurance contract covers physical loss of or damage to good and or merchandise insured hereunder through the acceptance by the assured and or shippers of fraudulent document of title, including but not limited to bills of lading and or shipping receipts and or messenger receipt and or shipping document and or warehouse receipt and or other documents of title. This insurance contract is also to cover physical loss of or damage to good insured caused by utilization of legitimate bills of lading and or other document of title without the authorization and or consent of the assured on their agent and or shippers. The argument advanced by the cargo interest that physical loss claim included certain things whether an assured had been defrauded into taking out document of title for non-existent good wasn't accepted. In an interesting and though provoking article in relation to this case in the November 2018 issue of Lloyd Maritime and Commercial Law Quarterly, John Dunn, visiting senior research fellow at the Institute of Maritime Law, University of Southampton, posed the question, can marine cargo insurance provide cover for non-existent goods? He concluded that there are many widely drawn insurance covers in use worldwide in today's cargo insurance market. This decision confirmed that even in a widely drawn open cover cargo contract, there should be an insurable interest and in cargo which can commence transit, so that in the absence of clear wording, there will be no cover for non-existent goods. 
Indeed, it is suggested here that to cover financial losses occasioned by the acceptance of fraudulent bills of lading and insurance is required that contain explicit wording covering financial losses not related to loss of cargo. How Angel Heart compares with NSW Leader versus Vanguard Insurance. This case and dense article is somewhat reminiscent of the decision of Kerry G in March 1990 and the New South Wales Court of Appeal in late 1991 in NSW Leader vs. Vanguard Insurance 1991, which involved a cargo claimant who had been unsuccessful at first intense in the recovering again its insurer for the loss of good ship pursuant to an FOB contract from Brazil to Sydney. It was common ground in the case that the containers had been broken into prior to loading and the bulk of the leather cargo stolen. Fresh shield have been fraudulently attached thereafter. At first instance, it was held that the importer had no insurable interest at the time the good had been stolen. The open policy wording contained the agreement that the insurance was an insurance, loss or not loss. The for instance, judge had also held that the loss or not loss clause could not be availed of. The claimant, however, succeeded in the court of appeal in relation of loss or not loss clause. It need to be recalled in that context that Section 12 of the Marine Insurance Act 1909 provides as follows. The assured must be interested in the subject matter insured at the time of the loss through the need not to be interested when the insurance is evicted, provided that where the subject matter is insured, loss or not loss, the assured may recover although he may have not acquired his interest until after the loss. Where the assured has no interest at the time of the loss, he cannot acquire interest by any act or election after he is aware of the loss. Rule 1 in the second schedule to the Marine Insurance Act also provides where the subject matter is insured, loss or not loss, and the loss has occurred before the contract is concluded, the risk attached unless, at such time, the assured was aware of the loss and the insurer was in. Notwithstanding those provisions, Caruthers G at first instant had held that the loss had not fallen on the cargo importer because the leader had been stolen from the containers before they had passed over the ship rail at Rio Grande. The Court of Appeal had the cargo owner was entitled to rely on those provisions. Relian was placed on the case of Sutherland v. Pratt, 1943, 815 where Park B said the simple question is whether it is any answer to an action on a policy on good loss or not loss that the interest in them wasn't acquired until after the loss.